figures 1116 through 1118 explicit constructors. In this example we're going to show you first a potential problem with a concept called a conversion constructor and then we're going to demonstrate how to fix that problem using a concept called an explicit constructor. Now first of all you recall from earlier in this lesson that we had our array class and in fact we've included the array header file and source code file in this project and basically in this example we want to demonstrate uh, how the array class can be used uh, in kind of an accidental manner. So if you take a look here you'll see that we have this array um, object called integers1 with seven elements being created and remember that the way that happens is it allocates enough memory for the seven integer elements and it initializes them all to zero. And to demonstrate that uh, the array was created with the right number of elements and the right values we call output array and we pass it integers 1 as an argument and if I stop there and just run this program you can see that the array had seven elements and there were the contents now here's where it gets a little bit more interesting our output array function which you can clearly see receives as its argument a constant array reference uh, it expects an array object to be passed to the function. Now at line 15 here I'm calling output array with the integer value 3. Now clearly that does not look like I'm passing an array object to this function. Yet the program compiled and ran and when it ran it told me that it received an array with three elements and that the contents were all zeros. So you can see what we're doing here is we're getting the size of the array that's received and we're displaying its contents. So somehow line 15 resulted in an array object of three elements being passed to the output array function and getting displayed. And the question now is why? Uh, so let's take a look at our array class header file and specifically here at the array constructor that receives an int parameter. You may recall in the string class example where we built our string class that we introduced this concept called a uh, conversion constructor. A conversion constructor is any constructor of a given class that takes one parameter which is a type other than the class type. Uh, for the class that you're defining. So in the second line 16 we have one parameter but it's the same type as the class we're defining that's the copy constructor. But in this case line 15 is actually considered to be a conversion constructor because it receives a single parameter in this case of type int which is different from the type of the class. So by accident by defining this default constructor that takes a single integer I enabled this strange capability at line 15 here of being able to pass an integer where an array object is expected. And the reason this works is that the compiler is allowed to do one implicit user-defined conversion, programmer-defined conversion, per uh, statement. So here in this statement, first the compiler looks for a version of output array that takes an integer. It doesn't find one. But it does find a version that takes a constant array reference and it knows by looking at class array that an integer can apparently be converted to an array object. So it creates a temporary array object using the integer as the size of the array. It passes that array object, the temporary one, into the function and as you can see here it was able to receive that array of three elements and display its values. So this was something that was not really thought about when C++ um, uh, first uh, came about with the concept of conversion constructors. So later on they had to add a new keyword to the language to fix this strange problem and that keyword is called explicit. And basically it enables us to specify that a single argument constructor uh, is uh, only supposed to be used when it's explicitly called. So let's take a look at this uh, version of the example here. Once again, we are trying to do the same thing. We've also added another statement. We'll talk about that in a moment. You'll notice that when I hover over the three here, there says it, there's an error. There's no suitable constructor that exists for conversion from int to array. So in this example, we fixed the problem and we did it with one minor modification to our array class, line 15, the explicit keyword. By putting this keyword in front of a constructor name that takes one parameter 
that is not the same type as the class, you are saying this constructor must be called explicitly in code in order for it to be used. The compiler is no longer allowed to use this for implicit conversions. So with that one minor change, now we get to line 15 here and see that it can't compile. And in fact, if I try to build this uh, project, you'll see that output array cannot convert parameter 1 from int to const array reference. And this is happening on line 15. And there is the error squiggly on line 15. So, uh, so now the ability to use this implicit conversion is not available to us in this version of the array class. Now if I comment out line uh, 15 and rebuild this, you'll see that number 1, it does build. And then I can also run this. And you'll see that there is still a way for me to pass an array object um, uh, using an integer argument like I did in the first version of this example. But I had to do it by explicitly calling the constructor with the argument 3. And this syntax that you see here in line 16 inside of the call to output array says basically create a temporary array object, initialize it with the integer 3 which specifies the size of the array, then take that temporary array object and pass it to output array which of course displays the size and the values in the array. Then when the statement terminates, this temporary array object is removed from memory and its destructor gets called uh, right before that happens to deallocate any memory associated with that array object. So uh, again, by making the one argument, the single argument constructor, an explicit constructor, we now prevent the compiler from using it as a conversion constructor. And from this point forward, whenever you define a constructor that can be called with one argument, you need to look at it and decide, is this also supposed to be a conversion constructor that can be used for implicit conversions? If not, you should declare that constructor with the explicit keyword, which you do in the header file only. You can see here in my source code file that the first line of that same constructor does not use the explicit keyword. So it's just in the header file for that constructor.